Good morning, everybody. I'm Matt Mullenberg. <laughs> it's crazy. This is, like, they were talking about what a cool venue this is. The last time I was here on stage was Duran Duran. <laughs> so this is going to be way less exciting than that, <laughs> but a little more modern. Um, yeah, really just, uh, also Texas, as you know, I was born and raised in Texas. Austin is one of my favorite places in the whole world. It's actually where I was hoping that WordCamp US would be. But Texas didn't quite have its game together as well as Philadelphia did. Um, but uh, all in all, very excited that WooConf can continue here. And so the worst, first Woo plus automatic WooConf uh, is right here in the great state of Texas. Do we have any Texans here? Yeah. Nice. Oh, welcome, welcome. I am here to deliver what we're calling the state of the woo. Uh, so to give you all a little bit of background, um, as you might have heard, <laughs> Automatic and Woo joined forces uh, just around halfway through last year. Um, it was something that you know, I've been talking about for a few years. Uh, we had heard over and over again as Automatic through WordPress.com and Jetpack was really trying to grow the WordPress market. One of the things that people kept running into uh, was wanting to sell things online. And also just many of you know that online selling is doing pretty well, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Uh, it was actually responsible for about 66% of retail growth was online sales in the past year. And one of the stats that really blows me away is over 190 million people buy things online in the US alone, but only 28% of businesses are online. So that other, you know, we talk about 25, I say 75 to go. 62% <laughs> of businesses aren't selling anything online yet, small businesses, which is kind of incredible when you think about it. And I think really speaks to some of the opportunity, uh, both available for WordPress and WooCommerce, but also everyone here in this room and on the internet watching the live stream. Uh, there is so much out there left to do. And um, part of what I'm excited about this joining forces is helping people do that a little bit better. Um, you all, has anyone used WordPress before? <laughs> okay, you're in the right place. <laughs> uh, you didn't take a wrong turn into the Joomla conference or anything. Uh, you can tell by the lots of blue in the audience and my hair, everything, you know, we're definitely representing WordPress here. And uh, it's been a very, very exciting year for WordPress as well. Like, as I talked about in the state of the word at WordCamp US, we finally cracked 25%. So you can now tell your parents or family that <laughs> you're part of something that one in four websites use, which is uh, pretty fun and pretty cool. And uh, many of the coming challenges and opportunities for WordPress as a whole, especially as we go more international, actually perfectly mirror the ones of WooCommerce. And for that, it's kind of interesting to take a look back. Uh, we call it from zero to hero. <laughs> hero is the little ninja guy. Do, do you all know that? I didn't know that at first. Well, I know it now, obviously. But um, yeah, he's that cool ninja guy. He's named Hero. Just through some of the history of WooCommerce. So when WooCommerce got started, which was September 2011, um, Zero downloads, a couple of themes, and only a couple of extensions. This was the 1.0 release. The team uh, that was working on it, which was both WooThemes and WooCommerce and all the other stuff that WooThemes was doing, was in total about 25 people. Fast forward about a year, and the, uh, it had sort of exploded in popularity. I don't think that anyone, including anyone at WooThemes, really anticipated how much market demand there was for a solution like WooCommerce. Uh, you go a little bit forward, WooCommerce 2.0 had already almost 10 x its downloads to 2 million, and the third-party community around WooCommerce had really started to grow with over 250 extensions. The team at this point was kind of around 35 people, so not that much longer. It had gone from 25 to 35 in, in about two years. Um, and again, Woo was still doing a lot of themes and a lot of the other work they were doing. Uh, around here is where it starts to really take off yet. Who was at the first Woo conference in 2014? That you were? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool in San Francisco, but Texas is just so much better, right? We've got tacos, we've got this river, we've got this awesome weather you saw. <laughs> um, but 2.0, uh, 2.2 rather, is when, uh, for me, 
WooCommerce started to really, really reach a exit velocity. And also when uh, sort of at Automatic, we started to pay a lot of attention to it, where we were seeing in all the stats and everything, both the confluence of our customers asking for something to help them sell better online, something that helped them democratize selling things, just like publishing had been made so easy and accessible. And, um, and just all the metrics start to take off, over five million downloads. At this point, team was, call it 45. And then finally, uh, to today, the, uh, when Automatic acquired Woo, it was 53 people. We've now grown that to about 76, uh, adding 13 in support, but most importantly, 10 developers. <laughs> so the vast majority of uh, you know, the amount of developers that have been added to Woo has been many, many times what it was before, particularly on the commerce side. And, oh, thank you. They're bouncing around there. 76 people across 18 countries, which I think also speaks to the, the, the diversity and the sort of global nature of Woo itself. One of the advantages of why we see such amazing Woo adoption has been that it works everywhere with all these weird little payment systems. If you want to like make a store selling Elvis quilts using like a Danish payment provider and the Swedish post, like you can do that. Um, and both of the customers will be very, very happy that you <laughs> have your Elvis quilt selling empire. It'll capture 100% of the Danish, Swedish payment market for Elvis quilts. <laughs> um, what also is really interesting to me about all this is just how, well, a lot of where WooCommerce is today, for over 400 contributors, and I've got one more here around some of the developer partners, looks a lot like what WordPress did. And in fact, if you look at many of the numbers around the number of extensions, the number of downloads, basically WooCommerce is exactly where WordPress was in 2008. So if you could, was anyone using WordPress around 2008? Okay, we've got some old school people here. Uh, if you remember, it had a lot of the same energy that we have here. Like the conferences were more like this size versus like multiple thousands that'll be at like WordCamp Europe or US. Um, you know, still a little rough around the edges, <laughs> different parts, but with so much energy and potential that people were getting excited about it. And as many of you probably hear, who's a developer here, by the way? Probably pretty much everyone. Um, what we're hearing and what I hope you're seeing is a lot of demand from folks, where 2008, 2009 was when people started just not to come to developers and say, I want a website. They started to say, I want a WordPress website. And today in 2016, we're seeing people say that with e-commerce. They don't just want a store. They don't just want to sell things online. They want a WooCommerce store. I think this is a trend which has started and will even just accelerate, especially with some of the stuff we're going to talk about and announce. Um, we have over. 100,000 developers for Woo that we track in various ways. And much like where WordPress's success and growth has really been predicated and based on uh, word of mouth and developers making amazing sites for their clients and for themselves, um, Woo has followed much the same pattern. And is the developer, you all here in this room, are pretty much the most important thing uh, for as we grow the next many years of Woo, because like I said, it looks just like WordPress in 2008. We launched the Woo Experts. Uh, we've already had over 38 people um, join this Woo Experts program. And this is going to what I said. There's so much demand for WooCommerce stores now. We want to connect it. And I believe there are 22 Woo Experts here. So raise your hand if you're a Woo Expert. Round of applause to these folks. <laughs> uh, that program is still just getting off the ground. But um, I think there's a lot we can do, especially as we sort of break WooCommerce into its own website. Uh, to really funnel more of that demand because people are Googling for WooCommerce now or they're Googling for Shopify and ending up on WooCommerce. So we're just getting a, a lot of people at the top of the funnel that we can hopefully start to direct uh, to more of the developers. So all of you can create really rich, amazing businesses building cool WooCommerce things. Uh, and then finally, meetups. So around when we kicked off meetups at WooConf in November 2014, there was only one which was led by uh, Brent in San Francisco. There are now over 39 meetups uh, all around the world and over 5,000 group members. So that's pretty incredible. Um, I think this is also something, just like WordPress's opportunities around localization, WooCommerce only has, well, only. Guess how many languages WooCommerce has translated into, 
Does anyone know? You get a free blog if you guess. <laughs> Eight? Twelve. Twelve. Twenty-six languages at 100%. Um, and we actually just uh, last week had an amazing, oh, a cool milestone, which is we had a uh, pull request to the main GitHub repository uh, from Uganda, from a Ugandan for Uganda currency support. Um, small request, but I would say, you know, uh, it portends things to come. This has really always been the dream of WordPress as well, that because the user base and the developer base is truly international, we can create a product that is natively in the world. Uh, my personal dream is that someday, just like right now, everything starts in English and gets translated to other languages. My hope is that someday there'll be plugins in like Chinese and Russian and Spanish and things that we actually have translators translating them back to English. So all of us here can use them. <laughs> um, not there yet, but we're definitely laying the groundwork and many of the localization efforts that we have in Core WordPress are actually benefiting everything built on the platform, including Woo. So that's sort of where we've been. Now I want to talk a little about a Woo solution. <laughs> Is that like immunity? <laughs> I saw immunity. I was like, it sounds like immunity. <laughs> um, so Wuxian. So the things that are coming uh, in WooCommerce, which is probably what many of y'all are most interested in. So talk a little bit about 2.5. Is everyone on 2.5 yet? Who hasn't upgraded? But is going to upgrade after shots tonight? <laughs> <laughs> 2.5 was a very exciting release. The first release, Automatic and we'll do it together. Um, included things like refunds, which if any of you were going back and forth to PayPal and refunding things and trying to fix your reporting, remember what a pain that was before? Uh, we made a lot of improvements to the UX. Uh, started to, again, in parallel to WordPress, create an API for WooCommerce. So it's extendable not just through extensions, but actually as a service model, where you're going to have things that might not even run PHP or WordPress talking to your WooCommerce store. Uh, and as many of you know who are following 2.6 development, which is currently slated in May, we're porting a lot of that to the uh, new scaffolding, which is in core. So really trying to take advantage and be a, hopefully a leading example of what the REST API that's coming in core and the plugin can be leveraged as a plugin. It's kind of a best practice. And then finally, speed. Uh, this is something that I hope to be a focus of every single release, but you've all seen the stats where um, when Amazon artificially shows their pages down 10%, they lose like a billion dollars per second or something. <laughs> so imagine that multiplied through the you know, millions and millions of WooCommerce sites out there. Anything we can do to make it faster is going to be a big, big help. What's coming is uh, most, who uses a theme based on storefront for their store? Probably 1.0. Storefront's very, very cool if you haven't checked it out. It's based on the underscores theme, which is also from Automatic. Another cool sort of synergy that we didn't even realize uh, before we started talking. But uh, before not too long, and hopefully even before the release of WooCommerce 2.6, we're going to release a completely updated version of the Storefront theme, uh, which will feature new typography, uh, sort of a better, more modern layout that we think people will find pretty exciting. And of course, everything is 100% responsive. Um, I think this smartphone thing is going to be big. And so we're making sure everything that goes into Woo, both on the front end, but also importantly from the administration side, is uh, fully responsive so that you can, your shoppers and users can use it on the go, but you can use it on the go as well. So you can sit on a beach, sipping Mai Tais, updating your WooCommerce store, watching the orders come in. We've also been trying to change how people do business. So while there's been a lot happening in Core and with Storefront, um, really, as many of you know, the extensions are where a lot of the action are. So it's good to think about this in sort of two categories. Uh, the top is changing how people sell, and the bottom is kind of changing how you can get paid for what you're selling. Um, so bookings shifts you from just selling stuff to selling your time. And you know, there's so many businesses where bookings um, are really, really important. Uh, memberships, you're selling content so, or access to something as opposed to physical goods. And then finally, subscriptions. Um, whether that's a content for the membership or the idea uh, that you know, maybe subscribe to a monthly box of Elvis quilts, <laughs> right? You can never have too many, especially in those cold Nordic countries. 
these sort of models, and what's cool about WooCommerce being completely open in the open source model that it is, that as new models pop up, um, like let's say uh, reverse subscriptions or something that we haven't even imagined yet, um, the community can develop it very quickly and it can be available quickly uh, for anyone who's built on WooCommerce to take advantage of. Pre-orders, so think of this like Kickstarter or Tilt in a Box. Uh, payment plans, which you know, allows you to take a little bit of money up front, no money up front. Sophisticated users could even use something like payment plans for like, something like leasing. You know, let's say you had a giant uh, tractor covered in Elvis quilts, and someone could lease it for $1,000 a month. They could, you could use the payment plan extension to do something like that. And then finally, which has been in Woo for a little while, is reward points, you know, getting people to have loyalty, which I think is especially important as sort of the, it's called the e-commerce giants, you know, Amazon, and all the little ones. <laughs> but Amazon, you know, Etsy, you know, the different places where people are selling online, having something unique to your store, your client's stores, um, is really key. And loyalty programs like Rewards Points can help that. We've also, one of the big changes since Automatic and Woo combined forces was taking two extensions, the PayPal, Braintree, Express Checkout stuff, and Stripe, which were previously about 80 bucks each, and making them free to the world. <laughs> I'm very excited about this partnership uh, because it really allows us, um, really one of the key things we've been doing since combining forces, really the first six months uh, were about bringing the companies together. So bringing the cultures, Wu has a fantastic culture, and combining that with Automatics culture, and they both kind of change both directions and now form a cohesive team. Um, we worked on these deals and then hiring are the main things that the first six months that Automatic was involved with Woo. Then finally in January, uh, lead folks from Automatic and all the lead from Woo went down to Cape Town. Uh, actually, my birthday was down there, which was a lot of fun. I got to see the, the South African wine country and, um, and really hashed out, like what do we think is gonna have the biggest impact on both WordPress and WooCommerce adoption going forward. Uh, things like the REST API, what do we want to be on the bleeding edge of and really set an example for the entire WordPress community of how things can be done? And where do we feel like we need to invest more resources? And time and time again, people getting started has been part of this. And so we're sort of systematically identifying all the biggest hurdles we see to people starting to get there, basically people coming from scratch and going to selling their first item. Um, you all know how to do that. <laughs> If you've ever watched a user test of someone tried to do this, however, <laughs> it will give you nightmares for months to come. But this is something that we have a lot of experience with. You know, if you think of sort of the relationship between WordPress.com and WordPress, um, I don't really call it a gateway drug anymore, but WordPress.com is a great way for people to get started. You know, first one's free. And, um, and then as they get sort of going, uh, WordPress.com can smooth over a lot of the rough edges of setting up databases or getting hosting or things like that and provide people a taste of uh, what is available. So we have a lot of experience with looking at that onboarding and looking at the metrics and usability testing. And payments came up again and again and again uh, with this. So we're very, very excited. I believe we have some PayPal and Stripe folks here. Hey. <laughs> So y'all can go mob them on the second floor later. <laughs> uh, this is also just so much smoother. I mean, PayPal Basic has been in core for a little while, but then, you know, that whole bouncing over to PayPal, PayPal account stuff was never ideal. And so now you can create credit cards directly on there. Um, as part of that onboarding and looking at this, we've partnered also very closely with Bluehost, doing sort of a special WooCommerce plan. Uh, I expect this is something that well, many hosts are starting to offer since the acquisition, and it'll be just as standard as a WordPress one-click in the future, where sort of this one-click set up SSL, uh, dedicated IP, WooCommerce, plus some of the necessary extensions, Jetpack, get everything in there, and people can really get started very quickly. And I also think this is crucially important because we're not just competing with sort of other open source e-commerce stuff. If you think about it, uh, the main competition for something like Woo is going to be like a Shopify or a Squarespace or something that really provides an easy web space, uh, web space, website creation uh, system that you know, also bundles e-commerce. So if we can make the one-click experience, you know, WordPress has probably over half of its growth over time has come from these one-click installers. Uh, if we can nail that for commerce, I think that'll increase uh, the potential market for Woo quite, quite a bit. 
And then finally, sort of thinking about what's next. Um, now, languages and translation is obviously a big focus. And this, again, parallels what WordPress has been doing. So country-specific things. So languages and currencies support in core, like we now support the Ugandan currency, thanks to that awesome fellow submitting the pull request. Uh, and then there are extensions, looking at more country specifics. Uh, we definitely want to double down on the sort of esoteric and obscure payment providers and shipping methods and payment on delivery and all that sort of jazz that's going on that's allowed people from all over the world. Who's here from outside the US just out of curiosity? Wow, it's a good like quarter or third of the audience. Um, many of these markets I find both because they might be going mobile first or because they uh, aren't well served by sort of the existing SaaS providers, you know. Um, I can't imagine that Uganda is very high on Shopify's list, for example. Um, but that's always been where WordPress shines, right? It can uh, sort of go into places fueled not by sort of uh, purely like in the commercial intent or market size or anything like that, but really fueled by the passion of the people who are there. Scalability. Uh, we're now seeing WooCommerce stores that are growing up with Woo. You know, they're getting to millions and millions of dollars per year and more um, of transactions. You know, we have things like ColourPop, Moment Lenses. Have you ever used a Moment Lens? That's actually a pretty cool one. It's a, you got it? I really wanted to take one. I had the lenses, but I didn't have the little thing that helps it all on. So you take your iPhone and you can screw on just a really great lens um, to your iPhone, which is already one of the if you think about it, the sensor and the software behind in your iPhone is one of the most sophisticated cameras in the world. And I say this as a hardcore photo head who just spent eight days hiking over 100 kilometers in Japan with like a five pound Nikon DSLR and a bunch of lenses. Um, the iPhone is incredible for what it can do. And so Momo sort of takes lenses in, into it, uh, powered by WooCommerce. So as we see these stores get bigger and bigger and bigger and go to millions and millions of transactions, tens of millions, and hopefully someday hundreds of millions of revenue going through them, um, scalability is luckily something that Automatic has a lot of experience with. <laughs> so we run you know, a lot of the top scale websites in the world, whether that's the hundreds of millions of requests every day that Gravatar serves, the you know, WordPress being a top 15 website in the world and serving billions and billions of page views, and just you know, starting to put WooCommerce and use WooCommerce more for our own things, uh, be that the WordPress swag store or other stuff. Um, some of the best and brightest minds in the WordPress community are now looking at uh, the scalability of Woo, and whether that's in its data structures, whether that's in its code, how we can really take it to something that, you know, again, there is a WordPress opportunity. One of the be most beautiful things about WordPress is the version that you download from the sites. Uh, you could download it to your laptop right now is kind of like 98% the same as the one that runs a top 15 website in the entire world and serves tens of billions of pages every month. There's no other examples of software like that outside of maybe MediaWiki, you know, something that you can download and that also runs one of the top sites in the world. So we want to make that as well for WooCommerce and looking at it. So something that you can download and sell your Elvis quilts to the two people in the Nordic countries. Um, but that can scale up to like an Etsy, Shopify, or Amazon scale opportunity, I think is entirely possible. Um, we have the technology, we have the ability with cloud, we have um, the technical know-how and the experience with WordPress to make this possible. So I'm extremely excited about that, uh, this enterprise scalability side of things. It also can give you confidence as you build sites for yourself, for your clients, et cetera, knowing that WooCommerce will be something that can take you all the way. Uh, to tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. And then finally, this is a little bit of a teaser. Uh, <laughs> so it looks like Hero's about to plug something in. Uh, we don't have anything to announce here today, but I can tease um, that, like I said, we've been looking quite a bit at the uh, sort of biggest stumbling blocks that people have with getting started with WooCommerce. It's probably some that you all have experienced and figured out how to work around but also just in our tests, in our experience, and in, in listening to the customers, um, we've heard that parts of doing a store are still too complicated. Uh, some of that was around payments, shipping, taxes. You know, you can go down the line of things that uh, still require a lot of configuration or you know, a lot of update or a lot of maintenance. Um, 
I think we can make these, you know, kind of in the Jetpack model where you get the best of both worlds. You can run the site yourself, have complete 100% control over all the code, but then bring in aspects of a cloud service that allow it to maybe either do something that's not possible on shared or dedicated hosting, um, that connects to something, who knows, or that just makes something a lot easier. I believe that there's an opportunity for WooCommerce there as well to leverage what we have learned at Automatic from Jetpack, et cetera, and um, apply that to making it, again, democratizing selling things online, making it easy so that anyone can not just have a voice, but you know, have a business, have a commerce, be an entrepreneur um, on the online presence. And doing that with WordPress, I think, is uh, what I am very excited about and also what I hope that we build together over the coming year. So thank you all so, so much. Uh, I am so excited that you all came to Texas. <laughs> and I'm going to be around the next few days, and I hope that we can hang out and chat. Uh, I think we have a few minutes if anyone had a question or two. Do we have a mic in the audience? Well, are there any questions anyone has? Wow, I just covered everything, right? <laughs> okay, one back there. Just stand up and I'll repeat it for the live stream and everything. Um, I'm a store owner, really new to the WordPress and e-commerce. Could you talk about keeping these updates on shipping, on taxes, on all these things that I have plugins for? So if WooCommerce does that update, then what I use? Disable all those plugins that I want? It's a good question. So she asked, you're a store owner, you have plugins for shipping, taxes, et cetera. Um, if WooCommerce does some of that, do you disable the plugins? Uh, possibly. I would think of it more like an additional plugin that might make it easier for you or for people who are just getting started. So just think of it another option. But if what you're, you know, a saying we have in Texas, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> if what you have is working, I would say definitely continue with it. And, um, but again, we, uh, you know, utilizing the, quickly growing team of WooCommerce, uh, the expertise of Automatic and building web scale services over the past decade, and just what we've been uh, hearing since you know, combining the teams. Uh, I think there's some fun stuff that hopefully you find compelling enough to, to use. between WordPress and WooCommerce? Yeah. Oh yeah, so the question was, what's the relationship between WordPress and WooCommerce? Um, WooCommerce is just like any other plugin on the directory. Uh, now, obviously, it's part of Automatic now, and so the full force and weight and resources of Automatic are, are supporting it. Um, but just like you know, Jetpack or anything else that Automatic does is that equal footing with everything else in the community. Um, you know, you can go and download WooCommerce. WooCommerce has to follow all the same rules as everything else in the plugin directory. Like, it's, a, it's an open marketplace. Um, there are other great e-commerce solutions for WordPress as well, uh, including the SaaS people are starting to move pretty heavily into the space. But we think we can provide something that provides a, a good mix that'll be, uh, again, perhaps give the best of both worlds. So uh, the flexibility and power that people have come to expect from WooCommerce, and maybe taking some of our cloud magic and raining on the <laughs> helping things grow. Does that metaphor work? OK, it's raining, the plants are growing. Yeah, OK. <laughs> cool. And last question, right over here. So along that, the same lines, do you have plans for that with Sure, so the question was, is there plans or a roadmap for like a, like a WooCommerce managed service, like WordPress.com? Ah, yes. Put, putting it on WordPress.com. I would say today, if you want something that's really quick, kind of one-click easy, um, that's actually really close to a WordPress.com in terms of ease of getting going, the Bluehost solution is really good for that. And I'm very excited now that Let's Encrypt and things like that are getting off the ground, that you know, th basic things that you'll need if you're taking credit cards like SSL will become easier and easier to do. Um, so check that out, especially if you have, like if, if you had a friend or family member who was like, How, what's the easiest way to get started with WooCommerce? Sending them to a web host is the best way. Uh, on WordPress.com, some of the things that I think we're going to build, and also just working on scalability, 
Um, we definitely hear demand from you know, the over 100 million people we have on WordPress.com now that they want e-commerce. And we get a lot of people signing up for WordPress.com every day who want e-commerce. So it's on our minds. <laughs> but I think that uh, you know, there's a, still a lot to do in terms of sort of both maturing WooCommerce, making it easier, building out the API so it can work with something like Calypso, and, um, and sort of figuring out what that integration could look like. So I would say in 2016, the focus is very, very much just on the WooCommerce plugin and the hosting partners. So uh, that is where we think there's the biggest opportunities for growth and improvement in 2016. So I hope that answers your question. Without, I can't be too exact on everything. Uh, well, I'm pretty much out of time. I really want to thank you all for getting up early this morning and chatting. And thank you so much.